Look at this. It is so fantastic and wonderful. It's amazing. Wonderful color. You have a lot of. Hi viewers, this week's video is about Amethyst. Second video of Amethyst we've cut in an emerald cut. You see in the last video how I cut the ideal emerald 133 quads from Steven Weintraub Jr. Now it is time to uh, cut this stone here with the instruction from the International Gem Society found this article of how to add sparkle to an emerald cut and will follow the instructions from Mr. Donald Clark to cut a pavilion and for the crown we use the ideal emerald 133 quartz from Stephen Weintraub. There we have finally a direct comparison between optimized emerald cut and uh, these modifications for more sparkle from Donald Clark. You see we have here a wonderful piece of Leochroic Amethyst. This piece here have a little bit more yellowish brown here in this part. Don't pay attention to my notes here. Just this is interesting here, this point. That's the point where we dub the stone. We have luck, we have three colors in it. More bluish purple, uh, reddish purple and this yellowish brown here. It's a very interesting material from Africa. Very nice and bright. See, we also have a few inclusions in it, but uh, it is relatively clear. I will show you some scenes of cutting, pre polishing, and polishing. We'll see this in time lapse, and when I finished the pavilion, we take a closer look at the stone before we uh, transferring it and finish the final gem by cutting, pre-polishing, polishing the crown. At the end of the video we have a direct comparison between a standard or optimized emerald cut and the cut with the instructions on the pavilion by Donald Clark. Enjoy! Okay, now let's stop the stone. At first we clean our dob sticks and our stone with alcohol. I'm using modeling clay to align and fix the stone in the position I need. Double check if everything fits perfect. Was the first time I dug two stones without preforming a flat surface. Worked very well. Now we mix our 5 minute 2 part epoxy by using a toothpick and an old piece of paper. Now I put some glue on the dub stick until it runs down on the stone to make sure we have enough glue between stone and dub stick. Add a little bit more glue around the dub stick that we become a safe connection. Let it dry and start cutting the first facets. Ok, start cutting on a fresh 260 grit Indian diamond disc which is very aggressive. Set my machine to 90 degree and start cutting the outline which means we set the size of our stone. Now I set it to 65 degrees and cut the next tier of facets. If the stone has the rough shape I change to my well used 260 grit diamond disc to cut out all all these big ugly scratches and add the next facets. Okay, time to show you how to cut. Let me show you how to cut because we didn't have a faceting diagram this time, only the instructions from the article. As you see here, there's the article. We begin by shaping the outline at 90 degrees. The edges I cut on 12, 84, 60, 36. Okay, the next step was create a girdle by cutting a row of facets around the stone at 65 degrees. Here, these facets are cut on 65 degrees on the same teeth like the girdle outline. And the next step is we have cut in the pavilion main facets, a set on each side on twos 1 and 95 and 47 and 49. After that we're starting to add facets. Set them to 48 that you see the facets. Next we, we have to add these facets on our other side. We have the pavilion main facet cut on twos number 49 and this one here we've cut on 47. 
to create such extra facets we're going a tooth back and forth which means when we've cut our mains at 47 and 49 we add the extra facets by going back on 46 and forth on 50 and so on and so on every time one tooth more or less until you run out of space here and as you can see here the next step is to cut these little facet here with number four on both sides by raising the angle a half of a degree and cut two facets in the center at 96 and 48. The step after this is you will then have to add another facet or two on the sides 55 degrees or so to blend the mains into the gill facet. We are cutting these big facets here to blend the mains in the gill outline. And that's it. So for the crown I'm using from our last stone we've cut from the Ideal Emerald by Steven Weintraub. So we have a direct comparison. Here you see we all work with the same angles from 35 over 30 to 25. You have to be careful here on this edge. You're coming up in a hurry to your gill outline. Also the hint in the instructions. So have an eye on, on these edges here when you've cut the extra facets. That's going on. Time to pre-polish the pavilion. Here you see me preparing my bed lab with 8K diamond. The 8K diamond on the bed lab can also be used for some fine tuning or to cut some tiny facets in your stone. The next step is polishing the stone with zirconium oxide on the dark side lab. Works extreme good and very very fast. Time to take a closer look now. Finished polishing the pavilion of the elongated emerald cut amethyst. Here is the rainbow in the stone. Maybe I can show it a little better here. Yeah. Here you see is our rainbow see all these black points and lines are from uh, my notes here on the crown. I can show it now a little bit better here on the paper. You have to cut these facets here very carefully. They can overcut at this point here very fast. But uh, I have enough space so I decide to cut one more facet. So we end up here with seven facets. In this case here the 89 I cut here meet here everything works fine be careful when you cut these facet here cut very very quick I cut it with the 8k diamond on the bed lab in the instructions it is the number four finish the mains by raising the angle a half a degree and cut two facets in the center at tooth 96 and 48 yeah everything works fine it is relatively easy to cut. At first, when I preform this I uh, decide to cut only the facets on one side and during overcutting I test to cut all four facets of each set. Also works very very good. I prefer to cut the complete set which means all four facets. Okay, after transferring the stone I have to cut the crown and I use the instructions here from the Ideal Emerald from Steven Weintraub Jr. Okay, now I will show you a timelapse of the transferring and after that we cut the crown. Okay, let's go. Start transferring by cleaning the stone and the dopstick with alcohol. Using a little bit of modeling clay to protect the cure. It is also helpful to get your stone off the dop after finishing it. And again we mix our 5 minute 2 part epoxy with a toothpick and an old piece of paper. We add some glue between stone and dopstick and all around to become a safe connection. Let it dry. Make sure your glue is hard and dry before you go on. I'm using heat to disconnect the dob on top. By using a wet paper tissue I protect the other side. Always be careful when you work with heat and sharp knives to protect yourself and your stone. Finished transferring and now we have to align our stone. I'm using my bed lab and set my machine to 90 degrees. 
pretty easy, but prove if your stone is aligned by cutting a fresh facet on the crown and check if your facet is parallel to your pavilion. Okay, look, what do you see? It looks pretty good. We can go on and cut, repolish and polish our crown. Well, here you see me polishing the crown. I prepare my oxide lab with zirconium oxide and work my way through. Time to cut our table. Here you see me installing the 90 degree tabling adapter by using my table aligner and the bed line. Now we can start cutting, pre-polishing and polishing the last facet, the table. Now we only have to solve our stone from the top stick again with a little bit of heat. Don't forget, be very careful with heat, sharp blades and knives that you don't destroy your stone or your fingers. Make sure you clean your stone from every little piece of remaining adhesive. Look at this. It is so fantastic and wonderful. It's amazing. It is a super wonderful sparkling gem. Look at all these reflections and all these colors, these wonderful colors. We have a lot of blue, yellowish brown, reddish purple, bluish purple. A wonderful gemstone. It reminds me a little bit on an unheated tanzanite. If you want to see how an unheated tanzanite looks, check out Steve Moriarty's channel here on YouTube. It's called moregems.com. He has some excellent specimens of unheated tanzanite. It is really an amazing material for amethyst. It's not the best light here. Check out my Instagram and Facebook if you are interested in daily updates here on German Gem Cutter. Some photos, extra infos, some pieces from my collection, some local finds and more. I can highly recommend that you cut stone in this design. Okay, now we have the instructions for the pavilion in the article from the International Gem Society and we have the festing diagram for the crown from the Ideal Emerald from Stephen Weintraub Jr. But uh, I will make some notes or a little diagram for you and written diagram with some infos so uh, you can make a screenshot for a later cutting because uh, I really can highly recommend this for quartz here. Take a look at this amazing gemstone. It's so wonderful. Okay, and now it is time for a direct comparison between the first cut, which was the Ideal Emerald by Stephen Weintraub Jr. The inclusions here are more beautiful than in this one here. So take a look that you find a clear piece with some good color for this cut here. The result is really mind-blowing. We have definitely more sparkle due to these extra facets here. It is not very complicated, the cut is relatively easy and uh, if you cut a few stones in an emerald cut, you, uh, you're ready for this cut here. It is a little bit tricky. To find out the good size for the extra facets, this beauty here has 29.8 carat. Don't uh, remember this weight, I think it was 19, 198, nearly 20 carat, nearly 30. This one's also very aesthetic, very good. So give it a try to a look. We also have blue. It is uh, because I use these amazing pleochroic rough material from Africa. An amethyst with good color will make also a fantastic result with those colors. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you had fun in gem cutting with me together. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Share my videos with your friends or in social media. It's also very helpful. Turn on future notifications if you don't want to miss a video. And as a gem cutter, stay tuned for the handwritten diagram in my notes, you can make a screenshot or you can come back every time if you need a little support with the instructions. Bye bye, hope we see us in the next video.